Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we are launching up Loner 5's final mission, carrying Lunar Delver to a soft landing on the moon. At least that's, that's the intent. Um, in between this episode and episode 19, the previous one, there have been, I think, around five Loner 5 launches, and all of them have failed one way or another, either boosters failing and engine failing, or in one case, me forgetting about boil-off. Um, in LEO, I had to wait too long, and the stage that was going to carry us to the moon actually boiled off, and we weren't able to get there. Uh, but the reason this is Loner 5's final launch isn't because of Loner 6 uh, being constructed, isn't because of anything in this playthrough at all, actually, because we're actually switching from 161 to 173. Yep, we're, we're uh, moving installs to a different Kerbal Space Program version once again, um, but this time it's kind of necessary. Uh, well, you know, thinking back to my, um, when I moved to 131, it was also necessary because the game was basically broken at that point um, when I was in RP0. Um, but yeah, moving from 161 to 173 is going to increase performance a lot. And there's gonna be a few different mod changes. Um, I won't have the mod list in this video yet. Uh, I'll have it in the next video when we're actually in 173. Um, the current install I'm, I'm saying goodbye to because of a few different reasons. Um, but the main reason is performance is just, it leaves a lot to be desired, specifically in the editor where stutters and freezes are very common and even crashing the game. Um, it's, it's just really not, it's, it's really not enjoyable when, when um, the main tool you have to use to construct everything is not working properly and causing the game to crash. And I'm hoping 173, because of all of the performance upgrades and all of that, will be a lot better. And actually, it's, it's even looking brighter for the future um, using 173 because very soon, possibly another month or so, 181 will be officially supported with RO and RP1. And I don't really feel like waiting until all of the mods are up to date with 181 and officially supported, so I'm gonna go with 173 for now. And I'm able to do this perfectly fine because someone in my Discord actually told me that um, I'll be able to transfer saves from 173 to 181 without any problems. And I'm actually really looking forward to that. So that means I can go ahead and start doing, um, start playing in 173. And I, I might be streaming some of it, I might not, I, I'm not really sure to be honest. Um, <laughs> depends uh, what I feel like really. But in 173, I don't really feel like it's necessary to do the same things for the series that I did when we moved to 161 because we all know what sounding rockets are like and I mean, you can strap a glider to a rocket and it's only entertaining for so long. Um, what I want to do, which is close to a glider strapped to a rocket, is actually focus on crude flight a lot more than I have like ever in any of it, these videos. Um, because I wanna try to see how long I can push the, um, the Kerbal's retirement date back. So far, I've flown one half hour flight and it pushed back a month. And I want to see, like, as we come, as we progress through the tech tree and get better parts, if I can actually focus on aircraft more. So I think that would be interesting, and that would be something new to show for the channel because we are restarting things that we've done several times over now, and that would make it a little bit more interesting that way. Um, the first four Kerbals, you know, Jebediah, Valentina, Bill, and Bob, will despite my best efforts, probably retire pretty soon into the playthrough. Um, and after that, I didn't really want to just hire random Kerbals, even though there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but I had this idea, um, and it's based off of things I've seen other streamers do, um, where their viewers actually create their own Kerbals that 
than fly missions in on, on the stream and I wanted to do something exactly like that. So um, if you head over to my Discord, I've got a channel called The Astronaut Complex, and there you'll, you're able to apply for your very own Kerbal, and that's a channel I'll also post future missions, as well as a Google Docs link where you can see info on all of the Kerbals that have been created. Um, and essentially, the missions that I post on that channel, you'll be able to apply for or say, hey, I want my Kerbal on that one, rather than it just being in the game. It gives you sort of, I feel like it'll give the viewer sort of control over what their Kerbal is doing, um, to a certain extent. I mean, when it all comes down to it, they're, they're in my hands, whether that's a good thing or not. Um, but, um, like I said, the Google Docs link will have info like flight time and what missions they've flown on, uh, what their status is currently, and, uh, their retired dates, and or if any accidents have happened, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so if that's something that you are interested in, feel free to drop by my Discord and, uh, send an apply down, and, yeah, we'll see you in the series then, in that case. Um, something else that's going on right now is I have actually trying to, uh, trying out a different video editor. Up until this point, I have been using exclusively Vegas Pro, and I've just sort of, like, grown accustomed to the, the bugs and crashes that it has, and how poor the performance is most times, and I kind of wanted to see if um, there were other video programs out there that I could use that might uh, that might help me out better. There is Adobe Premiere Pro, I'm not using that, it's far too expensive and I really, really loathe subscription-based video software. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the reason I'm not going with Adobe for these things. But I also tried um, something called Filmora, Filmora 9 and Filmora Pro, they're both like $150, and I gotta say, I was actually impressed with some things in that in their software, but they seem just a little bit too simplistic, and I was missing a lot of things from Vegas Pro that I've just grown accustomed to and sort of take for granted. Um, and then someone on the Discord actually told me about DaVinci Resolve 16, and that's the program that I'm using to edit this video right now. And so far, I am actually like very much in love with the UI and how everything looks and the different features that it has. And I, I don't have any like serious complaints that affect me too much. Um, however, this is the third time I've had to actually do this voiceover because recording the voiceover in DaVinci Resolve itself just resulted in lots of clicks and pops and there was no way I can upload a video with my voice sounding like, like with all the clicks and pops like that. So I'm actually using a separate program that I use to make music to record the voiceover right now and I'm hoping that that turns out all right. Other than that, I think that's a good update for today. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.